I'm in the book of Hezekiah. So, so go with me to Hezekiah chapter 3. And, I just, and then I kept my head up just to see how many. To a person, with one exception as I recall. So I'm, talking, I'm eating with like eight of my guys, nine of my guys. They're all like... They're looking for the book of Hezekiah. Of course, there isn't a book of Hezekiah in the Bible. But the point is, is that they're all looking. Well, why are they looking? Because they don't know the Bible as well as they think they do. So there's nothing at all wrong with being like an element, a good elementary school teacher and saying, okay, we're going to go to the book of Deuteronomy. That's in the Old Testament, and it's the fifth book of the Old Testament. Totally appropriate. <coughs> okay? Totally. Oh, thank you so much. My, my life flashed before me. Oh, you don't have to. But I think it will still do its thing, won't it? It won't charge it, but doesn't it still just keep it from dying? Yeah, but no, th that one from the white one doesn't actually charge it, but it keeps it from dying. I think it's the amperage. Anyway, I don't know. But uh, as long as there's no explosion, we'll be good. Okay, so don't assume that you're here. There's no biblical ideas, themes, stories, anecdotes, etc. Okay? Uh, finally, when we talk about the appeal, preaching involves exhorting persons to a higher standard, a better life centered around God's will for them. It is, it is an exhortation to better behaving and or better thinking. It is unfair and illogical to exhort someone to change in your sermon, talking about application, practical application, to challenge them, to exhort them, to ask them to change, and then not give them the opportunity to affirm their desire and willingness to make that change in the appeal. Now, how many of you have been reading Persuasion by Mark Finley? Have you been reading it? Okay, so you know exactly what I'm talking about here. You get them up to the point of decision, and then you say, let us pray. No, 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 no. If, if your whole purpose is to bring someone to a better, deeper commitment with Christ, and especially if you've been talking about specific things, specific practical things, don't bring somebody, oh, blah, 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 you should buy the, blah, 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 and get them right up to the point of making the decision and then not give them opportunity to make the decision. That's a kind of intellectual cruelty. Now, every appeal does not have to be an altar call. It doesn't have to be a decision card. It doesn't have to be... Uh, a raise your hand or a stand. You can have different kinds of responses, but if you are going to preach that people should be making decisions, give them the opportunity to make a decision. Make sense? And that's what we mean by an appeal, an appropriate appeal, an appeal that comes down to the point and asks the question, based on what you've heard today, do you want to <coughs> fill in the blank, or are you willing to <coughs> whatever it is? Okay? So if you're going to preach in an exhortive way, in a way that you're encouraging and challenging and asking and inspiring, you then have to give people the opportunity to make some kind of a decision. How many of you in your church, your local church, it has been more than a year since your local pastor, not a visiting pastor, your local pastor made an altar call? How many of you in your local church has it been more than a year since your local pastor has made an altar call? Put your hands up. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. More than half of us. More than half of us. Do you think there's something wrong with that? Yeah. Fundamentally wrong with that. Now, why would a pastor not make an altar call of some kind? An altar call is appropriate. Why would he not do it? Well, for, it could be a variety of reasons. One of which is probably this reason. He makes the incorrect assumption, which is a very unfortunate assumption for a pastor, of, of anyone to make, because they should know better, that the congregation doesn't need it. These are the saints. They're here. No, 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 no. You cannot make that kind of an assumption, right? You can't say, oh, well, you know, these people, they all know the truth, and et cetera. Even people who know the truth and who are following the truth have those moments, those pivotal crossroad watershed moments in their lives where they need to respond. I know that I have been sitting in sermons where I've thought, the sermon has been so speaking to me and so ministering to me that I've thought, I hope this brother makes an altar call because I need to go up front. I need to respond to Jesus. I have to respond to Jesus. Have you ever had that experience? And then were you disappointed when the call wasn't made? Yeah, because you still made a decision in your heart of hearts, but there's something formative. There's something substantive about going forward and receiving the grace of God. There's something about it. And so there have been experiences in my life and in yours where you have almost wished for it, but it didn't come, okay? The assumption is all oh, these people don't need to make a decision because they're in the church. These people don't need to make a decision because they know the truth. These people are already Seventh-day Adventists. But even Seventh-day Adventists have a stepwise walk with God. 
where I'm today, this new year, yes, I've been a follower of Jesus, but this year I need to make this decision, okay? And in coming around the new year, it's a very appropriate time to be challenging people to a new level, to a, to a, a higher standard, to a better standard. And so the fact that so many hands go up is proof positive, case in point of this very thing, that appropriate, reasonable, exhortive appeals should be and often are not being made. Jess. Example, yeah. And then start making altar calls. Could I make them small to begin with? Like, mm -hmm. do you guys agree with this? You know, would you like? Yeah. To Absolutely. And don't make and don't make an altar call every time you preach. Okay. But the, absolutely. In fact, it would be powerful if somebody like yourself, Jess, stood up there and preached your guts out and told people to come forward. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, without a question. <coughs> without a question. Of all the altar calls that I've made in my ministry, and you're talking, I suppose it's got to be hundreds, more than a hundred for sure, I've only ever preached one sermon where I made an altar call and nobody came forward, just once. It was really awkward. And the difficult thing was that I was actually preaching back-to-back -back sermons because there were so many people coming to our meeting that I had to preach, and then we literally had a 15-minute intermission, everybody filed out, a new group filed in, and I had to preach the exact same sermon again. So I preached the sermon preached my guts out, poured my heart out to the people, made the altar call, made the altar call, made the altar call. People are just, they were glued to their seats. I don't know what it was. I don't know if I didn't have the spirit. I don't know what it was, but they were just like, Dish. they were just like glue butt, you know, they're just like not going anywhere. And so I was like, I was, I was a little shaken by it. I was a little rattled. And so we just closed, I just closed with prayer. I said, you know, this is a decision you can make in your heart of hearts. We'll see you tomorrow night. So then the next session, I preached the same sermon. And, and how do you think I felt about the altar call? Do you think I was, do you think I wanted to make one? No, no I was coming up with a hundred reasons not to make one. But the Lord, he just impressed me with the fact, I felt it was the Lord impressing me with the fact that, that this is the most, important time to make one because you feel least like doing it. So I was just like, oh, I don't care. I'll be a fool for Jesus, man. I'm just going to lay it on the line. I just like, Marr! I just like, who needs to come forward? And I was like preaching, nobody's coming. And I was like, oh man, this is so rough. Making the call, nobody coming. Making the call, nobody coming. And I'm just like, no, double strikeout. And not for my glory, but just like okay, you know, I guess maybe I've just, whatever, I need to go home and repent. I got some issues, you know. And then, hallelujah, this, this one person came forward, Cliff came forward. And I was like, yes, Lord, you are awesome. I praise your holy name. Come down to the front and uh, gave Cliff a great big hug. And, and we ended up visiting afterward. And check this out. He was a practicing homosexual, but he was largely a closet homosexual. Certain people knew but for the most part, he was very, he was, he kept it to himself. And he felt that this was, he, and I don't know if this is the case, but in his heart of hearts, he felt like this was his last chance to really depart from this lifestyle and to make a decision. And he didn't want to come and he didn't want to come. And he said, but you wouldn't stop calling and you wouldn't stop calling. And he said, I, felt, I just felt the spirit of God speaking to me saying, this is your chance. Make this decision right now. And the guy comes forward. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I'm just preaching my guts out, making an appeal. And little do I know that this person in his heart of hearts is wrestling with this whole lifestyle issue of homosexuality and, and is he going to go with God? Is he going to go with that lifestyle? And I make the appeal, he comes forward. And I tell you, from that point forward, I decided in my heart of hearts that I would never not make an appeal when I felt impressed to do so. Because you just don't know what's going on in the lives of people. Does that make sense, everyone? And so if you make an appeal every single time an altar call, that's inappropriate because that's not the only way to respond to Jesus. But it is a significantly, it is a significant and a wonderful way to respond to Jesus. And we should see more of it in our churches, far more of it. The appeal has to be appropriate to the people preaching to you. Appropriate to the people. Is and like all people there? You call them down the front, so they're like mad hips or something? Like yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. <laughs> I'm glad you mentioned that thing. Please do me a favor and never, as long as you live, say these words when you're leading out in the prayer. Who's doing our prayer? Al, are you doing our prayer this week? Okay. You will be expelled if you say these words. Just kidding, of course. Never, as long as you live, say these words if you're leading out in prayer. 
or if you're at a prayer meeting, or if you're just with your students or friends or family or whatever. Do not say, let us kneel as far as possible. <laughs> now, question. How many of us here have heard that said before? Okay. How many here have a clue what that means? It means nothing. What they mean is, in as much as it is possible for you to kneel, please participate in kneeling. But let us kneel as far as possible. Can you kneel farther than the floor? It's, I just can't believe how these things get into, into our nomenclature and we just repeat them. What does that mean? It's like a, the most meaningless, senseless statement I've ever heard in my entire life. Let us kneel as far as possible. Let us kneel even lower than the floor today. Let us kneel below the floor. Let us go to the basement in our kneeling. No. What you're saying is, what you're saying is, is let us kneel, and we recognize that some of you are unable to kneel. Kneel in your heart of hearts. That's what you say. But don't say, because you heard somebody else say it, let us kneel as far as possible. Blah. But you are correct to say that the appeal should be appropriate to the people to whom you're speaking. But let me say this. <coughs> Sometimes we also need to get out of the appropriateness and out of the comfort zone. I preached a, I've preached several times now in uh, Sweden and in Norway, and in both of those countries, as well as in Germany, uh, European countries in general, um, uh, not all of them, but many of them are very <laughs> on altar calls. It's just an American thing. It's a, you know, and I've had people tell me in, in those countries, do not make an altar call because people won't come and it's not really our culture and it makes people feel uncomfortable and, you know, you know I'm not going to pay attention to that. <laughs> so I have been in situations where I have made altar calls and people have just sat there and I've had to say, hey, listen, I know that you're Norwegian. And I know that you don't come forward to the altar but maybe once in your life <laughs> because you live in Norway and no one ever asks you to. But I'm asking you to, and this is your chance. You come, and people came. I have seen it. I could tell you the story about this one camp meeting I was preaching at in, in Fredheim, and there was all these young people just lining the tent, five or 600 people there, and I just felt strongly impressed to make an altar call. And I did, and people started coming. <coughs> people start, the, the young people started coming. Now, they didn't come right away. I had to remind them that I knew that they were Scandinavian and that that's why they weren't coming. You can't tell me this sermon didn't speak to your heart. I'm up here crying my eyes out. I know the sermon has spoken to you. Now you get down here right now. <laughs> right? You get down here right now. You, you relinquish your Scandinavianness for just a moment and you respond to Jesus. And then it, I remember it was one particular guy, friend, and he was just like, <laughs> he like stands up and all the whole like, Oh, you know, they're just like, and then somebody, and they like start coming, and then like the whole group was like, and they all just start coming, and I was like, hallelujah, you know, praise the Lord. So yes, appropriate, but sometimes appropriate is not appropriate. Sometimes what people think is appropriate is not the most appropriate thing, and so don't be afraid to stretch people a little bit. Go, go. Oh, that's great. All who are able, please kneel, makes sense. Let us kneel as far as possible does not make any sense. You could say, let us kneel in as much as it is possible, but that sounds kind of funny. So you just say, please kneel with me, and if you're unable to kneel, kneel in your heart. But please, never, as long as you live. I should have you raise your hands. I solemnly swear <laughs> that I will never say the words, let us kneel as far as possible. Does anyone want to take that oath today with me? Hallelujah. You all get certificates of excellence. Okay. <laughs> Don't preach the exhortation unless you are willing and going to make the invitation. Okay. If you're going to preach for people to make a decision, give them the opportunity.